Hello, and welcome. I'm Zyder, and here we are, once again, at the entrance to Bethardoms, because one cannot be sure of what exactly I could potentially run into on the second run through this building, because, let's be honest, I don't remember entirely how I got in here. I have a vague recollection of the path I took, but it's not like I memorized it or anything. Although, I'm pretty sure now that we're on this path, we pretty much can't screw it up. I hope. So that poison is painful. Like, I pretty much got put in the situation where I was getting ripped to pieces by it and there wasn't much I could really do to survive through it, at least not with six of them. I think it was six. It started off as six. I'm pretty sure. Because they seem to be primarily in bunches of threes. But it was destroying me faster than I could actually deal with it. Which was... frankly a bit rude, to be honest. Uh, this is not the right way. It make a whole lot of sense to me because you'd think if I... Actually, now that I think about it, if I went up that way, I could gain access to the stuff that I had seen above my current location. Assuming it would put me there. Possibly, maybe, theoretically, could be... Something like that. Oh, it is dark. Dark, I say. But, uh... Assuming, based on what happened with Red Eagle, if these people are still alive, they should be fairly low on health. I might just crossbow them for simplicity's sake. I don't know if that's a good idea, but I'm going to probably try. In theory. Assuming I can not be completely and totally lost finding my way there. Okay, here's the death trap of doom. There's probably more loot that I've missed within all these rooms and stuff, but honestly, I don't really care so much about the loot. It's more of the reward at the end of this whole quest that I'm after. Hmm. I thought about going for a swim, but then I realized maybe I can't get back up simply if I do that. I hear talking. I'm presuming it's the ones the whole way up there. Ow! Um, okay. Crossbow? Okay. Right, right. I have to go through the study before I get to where I need to be. So, yeah, I completely forgot about that trap. That hurt. A lot. I completely forgot there was a trap there, too. That one probably would have killed me. Not even joking. Probably would have completely destroyed me. What? What What are you doing, game? Game? Well, that was weird. One down. How you doing? Ooh, right in the head. Whew. I realize I'm basically cheesing this with the crossbow, but. Holy crap! These people hurt, don't you know? Okay. 
I hate having actually used the crossbow in first person, but otherwise my shots are going to be hideously inaccurate. And I'd rather not have to fight with that. Uh. Wait, what? This way? I'm gonna pay careful attention because this looks like a good place for a trap. Perhaps not. This door's comical, by the way. It's here, but it just leads to where already you go. Okay. Is this the last transition? Mechanics. I think it is, and I think the door to the outside is... Actually, I think about it, it might be behind Orchendor. It might not actually be available before that point. Which would kind of make... Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh. That's a Dwemer Ghosticles. Reversive creatures. And that's two more Dwemer Constructs. <coughs> oh, I missed. How you doing? Okay. I missed. Okay. Okay, not quite dead, but close enough. <laughs> I'm always worried about actually fighting the uh, stuff from immersive creatures because I can't be sure of what its balance is going to be like at this point in the game. And balance is already a bit of a toss up with the uh, Dark Souls mod because someone basically. Ooh gonna craft one of those at one point. Uh, someone basically edited the base values for certain aspects of the game and that's how they created the Dark Souls mod. It's not incredibly in-depth. So balance is always a, an iffy factor. Ow! Okay, apparently I need a light. Oops. Something tells me I should heal before I do anything stupid. I foresee a spider. No? Okay. Hmm. Spider. Hmm. What is this? Quicksilver or vein? Oh, thought I had a pickaxe. I know there's one somewhere in this dungeon, I think. What are you? See what I mean about the whole balance thing, though? But then again, you know, what's balance when you have a shield bash, huh? There's a spider. Ow! It's a dart spider! Ow! Rude! Ow! Rude! Ow. Screw you. Drinking behind the corner. Deal with it.
Yes, I just bashed the spider out of midair, whatever. Ow. Actually, what do you have on you? Amethyst, dwarven oil, glass arrows, and a grand soul gem. Ooh. I see. So let's try a power bash. That uh, did almost nothing in terms of damage. Oh uh, yeah, you can get soul gems out of these. So technically they have a chance to drop humanity. Okay. I'm gonna stop trying make trying to make sense of that. Expecting more spiders. There's a spider. You know what? Screw these. Oh come on. I'm sick of getting electrocuted. That that's pretty much the extent of it. Okay. Am I even going the right way anymore? I haven't been paying attention. So, here's my plan. Oh, this looks to be the room. I think. No, 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 no. Next room. Next large room this room. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to quick save, and here's why. I'm going to fire this crossbow, and I want to see what this crossbow does to him. I could miss. That's a good start. Okay. The crossbow did almost nothing, which is fine. I was actually hoping for that. If I basically disintegrated him in one go with the uh, crossbow, I was going to load back from the save and try again. Oh, you bastard! Holy crap! I don't think I like them dealing additional damage. Which is what hard mode does, f well, for one. Heat of Thought Dom's Elevator, Reality and Other Falsehoods, Ring of Minor Destruction, Staff of Zombies, Amethyst, Chrysomere. Why does that sound familiar? But I do believe that's a sword. Yeah, 61. Oh, it's a great sword, okay. I was gonna say, 61 damage, that seems a little bit, uh... redonkulous. To be picking up. But, you know what? If it's a great sword, that's fine. I'll accept this. Mm. Holy crap! I would argue that I cheesed my way through with the uh, crossbow, but man, oh man, if I hadn't been saving my healing potions, or more of, I should say, my Estus flasks, holy crap, there's no way I would have survived that, especially if I hadn't hit him with that initial crossbow shot. And it crashed. I'll be back with you shortly. Okay, had a bit of a crash there, not entirely unexpected. Happens occasionally when during the outside world, but uh, here we are. And if there's a difference in uh, audio quality or video quality between this episode or this part of the episode and previous, there's uh, 
There's been a lot that's happened in between these two parts. I had originally recorded this part of the video. Um, like, immediately after the crash. However, I was having some slight issues with my, with my uh, like, audio and other miscellaneous things related to my computer at that time. Which I have seemingly subsequently fixed. Uh, it's actually been nine days since I worked on fixing that. Nine days I had my computer running without a single issue, so there's that. Uh, I'm aware that I haven't had any videos out for a little while. I had a buffer uploaded. Um, am I going the right way? Yes. I had a buffer uploaded, and I was like, oh, I've got plenty of time to get these, you know, re-record re the last half of this video and whatnot. Oh, I can't be bothered with that. You know, before it, I actually need to get them up. And by the time that rolled around, I got talked into getting Grand Theft Auto V for the PC. Which, then subsequently, within a day or two after me acquiring it, everybody I knew that was trying so hard to talk me into getting it, pretty much stopped playing. I am staying out. Which is not this. amusing, I might add. You are dead. Okay, whatever. So. That said, let's have a little talk with Perriate here. Well done, mortal. All things are in their order. And Orchendo roams the pits. His betrayal will be punished. And your obedience is rewarded. So, Go. what now? Seek your fate. I will be watching. And perhaps we will meet again afterwards. Well, then. Embrace order and hard truth, mortal. Goodbye. So. We should have acquired a new shield. And here it is, Spellbreaker. While blocking, creates a ward that protects against spells for up to 50 points. Whoops. Uh-oh. Okay. So. So. Do I not have a necklace equipped? I apparently do not. Well, I guess I'll put this on. Yeah. So, it takes, there's a bit of a, you could call it a wind-up time before it actually takes effect. And if this is broken, you'll actually get a, like a bit of a stagger. So that's, that's a bit of a downside to it, but, uh, other than that, it should be pretty much straight upgrade, full and complete. Uh... Armor 53, armor 41, and that's before I've even upgraded it, which uh, is a pretty big deal. Whoops. And we will set that wherever it is to 1. There we go. Me and that menu having a bit of a uh, disagreement. So, I think this now leaves me with needing to head to, I guess back to Markarth, really. Uh, no. It says mouse one set destiny. Oh, there we go, I can place a marker. That, uh, the marker ended up pretty weird there, but what are you going to do? And at this point, if Right. I guess so. It seemed a little awkward to me, but that might have just been the general path. But uh, there's a Google document in the description of these videos now containing my uh, mods along with the uh, links to them. 
Yeah, that's the words I was looking for. Uh, also, I should note, because to some people this could actually be useful information, that is actually the order in Mod Organizer of how I have them set up for terms of overwrites and whatnot. Now, that's not necessarily the actual ordering of the ESPs, but for overwrite purposes, that's how they're set up. Because I actually got that list by opening up the Mod Organizer mod list for the profile I'm using, pulling out any mod that wasn't activated, which basically, if it wasn't activated, it had a minus sign in front of it, which is why all the ones there have a plus sign in front of it, and pulled all those out and then went through them one at a time in order to get the uh, URLs for their Nexus Mods page, or in some cases, I, I don't... I think whenever it came to the Skyrim Workshop, if there was a Nexus version of the mod, I would acquire it. I would put the link for that instead. But I think there was one or two where I put a, uh, a Workshop link. And aside from that, there's various ones without... Uh, links at all, and that's more for security of my own situation than you guys, because uh, if you're uh, familiar with Skyrim modding sites, you'll know of a website called Lover's Lab, and as the name itself should imply, there's, uh, should I say, unscrupulous, uh, unscrupulous ads on there. And so I didn't want to directly link to it. Um, I left the names there so people could find them in case that, you know. But I highly suggest that if you're looking for those mods, not to do it in some public place such as, like, a, a library or something like that. Do it basically at home. Because, yeah. My cousin actually had a slight issue with that because as it... A majority of the time, at the moment, he can only access the internet via things like the library or various open Wi-Fi's. Which, by the way, in case you are unaware, if someone's Wi-Fi is unsecured and usable, it is not illegal to use it because it is their own idiotic fault for not securing it. Especially considering that these days most routers have an automatic security thing. There's the. Uh, the uh, passkey thing, I forget the exact name at this exact moment, but basically you press a button on the uh, router, or in some cases there's acquiring a code or whatever off the bottom of the router, and some, basically it's hard to break into somebody's network by accident. Or more of, you can't People are dumb if you can get into that. That's the short version of this. But it's not illegal if they haven't secured it. Wow, that was a hell of a tension. But anyhow, that said, I highly suggest not looking up the mods without links if you're in a public location or using a public service unless you're doing it basically anonymously. Like, for example, if you're accessing say a library's internet, well in most cases it's probably not even going to let you there because it may come up as a blocked site due to the content in the advertisements. Just, just giving you a warning. Nothing I actually pulled off of there is of that nature, but it's just a warning. That said, uh, hopefully things will become slightly more regular by the time you've seen this because I'll be hopefully less distracted. And I may or may not uh, reduce the frequency of these. I thought about doing another interesting little series where I make a character. Supposedly, you can get Arena and Daggerfall for free, but honestly, they're ran in DOSBox. I'm not sure that running DOSBox will run very effectively, and it's probably not a good idea. So I'm probably going to stay away from that. But I thought about doing a series where I make a character in Morrowind, play through Morrowind, then take Oblivion, 
play through Oblivion, and then play through Skyrim with said character. Or I consider doing something slightly weird, which is starting all that off with a precursor in ESO, because as far as I'm aware, Elder Scrolls Online takes place in the absolute earliest of it. But it requires some slight, or should I say, cheating in certain aspects. Because the idea would be, I could still go with the whole, you know, oh, you become a prisoner so you lose your stuff, you know, oh, your, your, you know, your skills go down from being in areas, you know, for having been locked away in jails or whatever, and that'll, come, that'll you know, explain the skill resets and whatnot. And then we can explain away the gear, except for there's just one thing, I'm not sure how it's going to work without sort of modding Morrowind and probably Oblivion to deal with it, which is, I was going to make a Dark Elf, which Dark Elves themselves could theoretically, as far as I'm aware, be able to live that long, but I was going to go with Vampirism, which means that at the start of Oblivion and the start of Skyrim, I would have to cheat the character to have Vampirism. Other than that, I think it'd be good. Because the idea is that the character's not going to so much have... It, it might have a starting story that I'll have to work on and come up with for when it gets off the boat. And I'll come up with... I'll go through the list of all the things in my modded Morrowind setup and try and make a face or whatever in that, and then I can continue, try to continue that through through the other games, which... Per game, it actually gets easier, I believe. More or less. There's a bit of a bump going from Oblivion to Skyrim, really, but we can work with that. We have the tools. So, if you're watching this, you have any ideas on whether or not you'd like to see that, yes, I would eventually end up with two Skyrim playthroughs at the end of it, but I think it'd be, I think it'd be fun. It would give me motivation to give me a nice little goal, because, like, if I decided I didn't really want to do all the side stuff in the game, then I wouldn't have to, and I can move on to one of the other games, or I could do a whole bunch of stuff in one game and move on, and if there's a certain game, like, Oblivion, which, I tried to play Oblivion the one day, and yes, this is a bit of discussion, and I probably should hold it off, but... Oblivion, to me, is probably one of the worst of the three. Because his graphics, in my opinion, are worse than Morrowind's. Because Morrowind, you can respect it for its age and what it is, but the general, the shape, the characters, you know, about them, they're, they fit. They're good. You know, like, when you take the game's age into consideration, it actually looks really good. Especially considering I have MGSO and stuff. But, Oblivion, something about the character proportions. The rest of the game, I don't really care so much about. I could live with all the, the ruins, all the base textures and everything. I could live with those. But something about the fact that every single character has a stupid, stupid, rounded face. just irritates me. I hate it. Especially when you get to the, the, the elves. Because it's like, every other portrayal of the elves hasn't really had a rounded face. They've had a sort of a long, pointy face, or... I mean, okay. You know what, I'll hold off with this. I'll, hold, I'll use this as a topic of discussion for, I think, the next video. But for now, I'm going to call this good, and I'll see you guys next time. Have a good day.